Hello Wayside Middle School. Thank you for including me in your vet virtual Veterans Day celebration. My name is Doug Peterson, also known as Dust Off 34. Here's a picture of me from 1970, 50 years ago. I'm standing in front of one of the helicopters that I flew while I was serving in Vietnam as a dust off pilot. The unit I was flying with was the 45th Med Company. And you can see this is our patch, 45th Dust Off Air Ambulance. And what we did was we picked up injured soldiers from the fields of Vietnam and took them to medical facilities uh, wherever we could. Our motto was so others may live. As you can see, this helicopter flying in Vietnam, this was down in a southern area of South Vietnam, and medical evacuation helicopters had the call sign of dust off. That's why my call sign was dust off 34. In this map, you can see there, are, Viet, Vietnam is divided into two countries, North Vietnam, shown above, and South Vietnam, which is down in the, the pink area. On each side of, on the west side of Vietnam is Laos and Cambodia. These two sympathetic, uh, sympathetic company, our countries supported North Vietnam in their war effort. So they would help facilitate the transfer of supplies and ammunition out of North Vietnam down to supply the South Vietnam, uh, Viet Cong, and North Vietnamese Army. We didn't have any direct conflict with them, so we weren't really have any uh, troops uh, uh, going into Cambodia or uh, Laos. Our primary focus was in South Vietnam. This map shows a little closer view of the area that I was flying in. And what we would have is a, a station, a remote station, where we would go out and spend three days at a time and fly that area of operation uh, doing a medical evacuation missions. So the far left one is over a place called Tainan, and that was pretty close to the Cambodian border. The next one is called Tan An, and that was a little bit southwest of Saigon. Then we had our home base, and that, that was called Long Ben. That's where our home base was. Then on to the southeast of that was a place called Nui Dot. And Nui Dot is where the Australians had a base, and we supported the Australians in their effort. And then on the far east side of our area was called Swan Lock. And I'll talk a little bit more about Swan Lock here in a little bit. But those areas are where we had a remote base where we would spend three days at a time uh, serving our missions. Now this next picture is a picture of Long Ben. This is our home base. This is where we had our helicopters, where we would do our maintenance, and this is where we would uh, be housed when we weren't on these three-day remotes. You can see it, there's some big barrels around uh, the helicopters and those were to protect the helicopters in case there was a mortar attack. Here's another uh, picture of the same helicopters in the same heliport. You can see the uh, areas around where the, uh, uh, the, the barrels were surrounding on uh, two sides of the helicopter to protect them. The next picture is me uh, in front of my hooch. A hooch is something we called, uh, is what we would call where we live. So it's certainly not an apartment. It's a, a place for two beds, uh, maybe a, a chair or two, and that's really about it. It really wasn't very good. You can see on that, right above my head there, is a big air conditioner. Now we couldn't go down to Lowe's and pick up an air conditioner to put in our room we had to barter for it so what we had to have we had to have something of value and find somebody that had an extra air conditioner and we would trade them for 
or what they had if they wanted what we had. So it was a trade type system. We didn't really buy anything like that per se. So fortunately we got an air conditioner relatively quickly. Uh, you can see that the area was, it really wasn't uh, a great place, but it, it is what it is. And there was another picture of me in there with one of my roommates. So one of the remote bases that I mentioned was a place called Tan An, and that was in the southern part of our area of operation. And this compound where uh, this picture was taken, and I've got an arrow pointing down to the helicopter. It's really going to be very difficult to see that helicopter there, but it, trust me, it's there. And this is where we would spend three days at a time when we weren't flying. We were flying most of the time, so there really wasn't much downtime. We, had, we would spend some downtime getting something to eat and maybe getting a little bit of sleep, uh, but we spent a lot of time in the air. But this compound was not very large. It's probably uh, this, the campus, uh, maybe two times the size of your current campus at Wayside. Really wasn't very big. So one of the missions that we flew out of that uh, Tan An uh, site was down in the south in the delta. You can see the delta is very flat. It's very wet, especially in the monsoon season. So in this picture, you can see I've got an arrow pointed to some yellow smoke, and this is where the, uh, the ground unit has uh, thrown a colored smoke out for us to uh, locate where they were so we could fly and pick up the injured. You can see it's really kind of wet. And then the next picture is the same, we're going into the same area, it's just a little bit closer up, and you can see the, uh, the area that we're getting ready to land to pick up the injured. We did not want to spend a lot of time on the ground, so we loaded the injured on very quickly to, to make sure we could get out of there. This next picture is a picture of a pilot uh, that I used to fly with a lot. His name was Bill Yancey, and then that's me on the right. And if that picture above Bill, you can see on the windshield that we've got some writing. It's hard to see again, but uh, and that writing is missions that we were flying. So we would take a grease pencil, a marker, and we would write down the coordinates and how many were injured and the call sign of the, uh, the radio frequency we're going to be talking to on the ground and so forth. All the pertinent information we needed to, to get uh, from one place to the other. Now, this, this is the tactical map that I used while I was in Vietnam. And it's plastic coated. This is the actual map that I had and I would be able to write in grease pencil on it on markers and, and flying uh, wherever we were actually. Uh, that, that picture that I showed you there was probably somewhere in this area down here. So what we, we didn't have anything like GPS or anything like that. So what we had to use was that map and we had to navigate to those coordinates where the injured was uh, was to be picked up. But not all the places that we landed were flat. In fact, you can see from this picture, this was taken probably out toward the Swanlock area with the dense jungle and the area that we had to land in was very tight, very small, but we had to pick up our injured there. If you look in the lower right hand corner, you can see one of the American troops there that was uh, on the ground when we were coming in. On this next picture, we sometimes we couldn't even land. We had to um, uh, just hover there as they loaded the patients on board the aircraft. This next picture is me. Uh, we're, this is when we were out in Swanlock area, and if you look carefully over my, above my right arm, there is a what we call a hoist. You can see kind of a ring, and there's a hook on it. And what we would do is we would uh, hook a jungle penetrator to that hook, and we would lower it down in the jungle because we couldn't land at all. So we had to sit there at a hover. And you can see from this picture. Uh, that jungle penetrator going down into the 
canopy of the jungle to have the patient that was injured strapped on and then we would bring them up to the helicopter. This was a very dangerous mission. It was probably the most dangerous that we ever flew because we were sitting above the trees. We had no, little or no protection from the enemy gunfire. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. So I, got, I was stationed at the home base and I got an urgent uh, dust off call and we were, had to fly from our home base out to the pickup zone as shown on this map. We got out, to the, out there and it was going to be another hoist mission. So we were, try, we were hovering above the tr jungle when we were trying to find the, for the, where the troops were, where the injured was, and we flew directly over the enemy and the enemy opened fire with an AK-47 on us. We began taking enemy fire and it was hitting the helicopter. So within, within seconds, our oil lines and our, fluid and our fuel lines and our hydraulic lines had been hit and we were beginning to lose power. So we're, we were able to escape out of that uh, area and find a clearing about three quarters of a mile away and we were able to land there without the in before the engine quit and about an hour later we were picked up and uh, taken back to our home base where we got another helicopter and flew back to the same area so we could pick up the injured soldier and bring him back to uh, to a medical facility for treatment that was a pretty scary time. That was the second time that I was shot down in Vietnam. So beginning in May of 1962 to May, March of 1973, approximately 900,000 patients were evacuated by a, a dust off or medevac crews. Almost 500,000 dust off missions were flown. That's a lot. And we had the golden hour. That golden hour was if we could reach the injured individual within an hour of their injury and take them to a medical facility for treatment, their success rate of recovery was very high. So that was our mission. We had to do our very best to get them as quickly as we could to a medical facility to get them for treatment. Now, it says that hoist, there were 8,000 hoist missions. Uh, I know that I flew 25 hoist missions while I was out there. And it says that one out of 44 hoist missions uh, resulted in enemy fire. Well, I think my ratio was a little higher than that. I'm thinking mine was closer to one in eight uh, missions uh, where I did hoist missions where I would take enemy fire. So look at those statistics, and it said that there are 500,000, I mean 900,000 patients were evacuated. These are the dog tags I had while I served in Vietnam. And when I bring these dog tags out, they're a reminder to me that perhaps there is a Vietnam veteran walking around today, 50 years later, because of something that I did while serving our country in Vietnam. You know, this, this slide is very poignant. It's a great quote from John Fitzgerald Kennedy. A nation reveals itself not only by the men it produces, but also by the men it honors, the men it remembers. These are the heroes of the Vietnam War, and their names are etched on a granite, black granite wall in, Vietnam, in Washington, D.C. There are 58,300 heroes on that wall. Today is Veterans Day. It's a day that we honor our veterans for whatever conflict or whatever t time of service that they gave our country. They gave their time for the service of this great country. And with that, I salute my fellow veterans 
as a thank you for your service to our great country. God bless America. Sadly, I'm not able to take questions directly because of the video and because of the, why we're having to do this virtually. But if you have questions about anything that I've covered or anything that I've said, your teacher uh, can, can get those questions to me and I will then respond back to you as quickly as I can.